I am passionate about women in science, uh, especially women in physical science, in chemistry and physics. And uh, someone in the institute said to me, oh, there's this organization called Girls Inc. And I think it would be a great match for you. All I knew was I didn't want it to be show and tell. That's what I knew. I didn't want it to be the girls come over and we show them science. I wanted it to be something where they came and had an experience of science. Uh, because I, that's what turned me on to chemistry. It was like using my brother's chemicals. I love doing that. So I wanted it to be where they actually had an experience of doing it. The research is that to get kids interested in science, middle school is really one of the places where you can get them interested. We were working on uh, goals and outcomes and instructional objectives for us as faculty. So I thought, well, we'll have my students do that. I'll have them set up goals for the project. I'll have them uh, come up with student learning outcomes, like what do they want the students to be able to do, and then what do they want to show them, what do they want the students to learn, to teach them. Okay. 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 And you know, normally I would have picked the experiment and then put the other stuff on top of it. But I actually saw that if they did all the goals, uh, learn student learning outcomes and objectives, then the experiment would be an expression of that, rather than laying the experiment on top of it. I had them at the end write about how they felt about doing the project. And they were, the, there was like a transformation in them before their first fears and concerns at the beginning. And then when they had done this whole exercise and they were, they knew what they were going to do and um, how they were going to be prepared, they were like, they were nervous, but they were really excited about it. And they we're going to take test tube number one. You don't want one. And we're going to put one 10 drops. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. give you one of these. Do you know what that's called? Yeah. What is right. it? They it's found that, right? Pet? Wow. I mean, I think what it is that they could see that they could do it. I think before their concern, was my students' concern is that would they be able to do this? And, uh, and I think they saw from that that they could do it. So then uh, the day came for the experiment, and the girls came over to the lab, and then they got started on their experiment, and they wore goggles and gloves. And uh, I was, my idea was to have the students from Girls Inc. do the experiment. Chemistry lab, we guard our eyes. Okay, put them down. Is that a little bit better? There we go. That looks so some of them made soap. Uh, some of them made uh, flavors like perfumes and food flavorings. Others made aspirin. Some of them did, uh, my students chose, I would think, more sophisticated experiments, like identification of unknowns. And I was surprised. I, you know, and that's what I thought was great. Because if I had been running it, I would have, you know, figured out what I thought was the best experiment. And it wasn't necessarily what they were interested in. And that was one of my guidelines for them. It had to be an experiment that they, were, they enjoyed doing. So that I felt that they enjoyed doing it, then they would be uh, enthusiastic about, you know, showing it to someone else and presenting it. And they taught them about lab safety. They taught them about disposal of waste. Uh, we also had... Uh, I'm got very much into green chemistry, and green chemistry is preventing waste. A lot of environmental chemistry is about what do you do after the waste, after you've got the waste. But green chemistry is about not having the waste, doing the best that you can to re not have the waste. And if you have it, dispose of it properly, but really trying to eliminate it by using safer chemicals, uh, being able to dispose them in, in smaller quantities. So my students had done poster board displays on it, and they were around the lab, and uh, they took the girls around the lab and talked about it, and I was really impressed. I was impressed with them. When the girls went with my students, I had them write the, a reflection. I did journaling, where they reflected on how, how it was for them, like how it was before they came and after they came, and uh, they were generally, my students were blown away. And some of them said it was like the best part of the whole course. <laughs> I've always had this passion and commitment for women in science. And I'd like women to know that they can do chemistry, but as a place, a field for them to go to and be able to, uh, if they like it, to be able to have a career in it. 
Uh, and my, how, my part in the mission to be the possibility for my students to be successful in it. So when I got into the Carnegie Group, I got that it, what I wanted to do is research about uh, teaching. And that really is what Carnegie is. It's the scholarship of teaching and learning where you come together with faculty members and you investigate and inquire into teaching and best practices in teaching and classroom research. Everyone's talking about it. They want to know more. They want to know the backstory and what's going to happen. So really, once you figure out that it makes a difference or not, you might want to look at it qualitatively, have reflective journals, uh, you know, or interviews to find out why. Uh, really what I've been looking for my whole teaching career. We had a retreat. And in the retreat, I looked at what my question was, like what was my question in this project, in this research project. And um, Matthew Olson, who did the retreat with us, said the most important thing in any research is the question. He said that's if you get the right question, then you're, you're good. If you have the wrong question, you can get all this data together and you'll find out it won't make any difference and you have to throw it out and start all over again. So that impressed me. <laughs> So I looked at questions that I could look at with this girls, Inc. I could look at the question, how were the girls impacted? Uh, I could look at the question, uh, what was the impact on them in terms of science? Uh, and then I thought of, well, how does it impact my students? So what I did was I brought it to the group uh, and I you know, told them what my idea was and I told them how I thought I would go about it. And then they gave me some really great feedback, because one of the things uh, I wanted to see was the impact before and after. So one of the suggestions that they had was, in doing this experiment, have my students uh, redo a lab report for the same experiment, because they have them do a lab report. So have them redo a lab report and then compare the lab reports. Another suggestion was to have the, the girls from Girls Inc. do a before picture of a scientist and an after picture of a scientist. A person or a person doing Whatever a scientist is to you. When you think scientist, what do you think? put it on paper. Okay. You can draw, draw anything. Draw anything. That's what you think. Yeah. Draw anything you want. And look at that and see, uh, see, was there any difference? So it was really great because there are things that I thought about that I wouldn't show would work. So I think that's one of the most powerful things about uh, Carnegie is there is a mutual uh, respect for each other, for our ideas, a willing to listen. You know, you don't usually get in the normal uh, collegial setting, uh, people just sit down and listen to you. I mean, we're all busy, we've all got our own issues with our students. So what Carnegie has done uh, has allowed me to see other uh, professors and instructors who are, have the same passion that I have about teaching. So it's like I'm not alone. This is larger, and that's the beauty of SOTL is that you start with something and people build on that research over time. So that may be. It's, it's not just that faculty are becoming more willing to look at what they do in the classroom and assess it, but it's that they're becoming excited about doing it and excited about understanding student learning better. So I had a student who came to my office the other day, a usually quiet student, and said every week he would meet with his girlfriend and uh, they would talk about what we discussed in my class. And his girlfriend is not in my class. And they have come to a point where um, they have decided to be more active in promoting social justice and wanted to come and talk to me what they could do at a societal Ooh, level to be more involved. And that was very important. <laughs> and I think that's what uh, showman means by moving faster along with the current uh, instead of being resistant to it. But to have a group where your commitment is to sit down and talk to each other about your projects and your have other people, use other people as a sounding board on what you're looking at, to have people share what they're up to is, is extraordinary and I think it's unique.